today on Dustin to Win. Here's what happens when you go all in for God. The reward of providence is that God will walk you into blessings that you don't even expect in your life. You will find yourself in the right place at the right time. You will find yourself getting chosen. You will find yourself getting picked. You will find yourself in an opportunity that you never thought was possible because this is one of the rewards of providence. He will walk you into places that you never thought you would ever experience in your life. But you gotta go all in. Hi, welcome to Destined to Win. I'm Frank Santora, lead pastor of Faith Church, coming to you from our broadcast location in Connecticut. I've got good news for you. The saving gospel of Jesus Christ is freely available to everyone and doesn't cost us anything. But the hard truth is that it demands everything. What does that mean? And is it as scary as it sounds? Join me as I explore the principle of being all in for God. What are the rewards of an all-in life? Number one, the revo- reward of providence. What is providence? Providence is a word that comes from two words, pro, which means before, and, and video, which means to see. And so what providence is, is the ability to see before it happens. Literally to see a problem before it happens and put a solution in place. See, God lives outside of space and time. And so what you and I see as a continuum, God's already seen. He's already seen the entire movie. Matter of fact, the Bible says that God sees the end from the beginning. Because what God does is he literally goes to the very end, watches what happens, and goes back to the beginning and starts there. That's why if you follow God, there's always a path to take you to the promise because God's already visited your future and backed up into your present. And so what happens is this. You have two forces working in the life of Ruth. You have the plot of the enemy and you have the plan of God. But what the enemy doesn't know is God's already watched his entire plot play out. And what God's decided to do is back it up and lead Ruth in the direction that she would go because Ruth was all in. And when you follow the providence of God or when you go all in, you see the rewards of promise, providence. And the first one is just so happen moments. Watch this. Ruth chapter 2, verse number 3. Then she left, and she went and she gleaned in the field. By the way, because she signed up for a life of being with her mother-in-law, she resigned to the fact that she was going to have to pick up scraps for the rest of her life. In Bible times, there was a law. It was the law of harvest. And it said that to the harvesters, when you harvest your field, leave some left over for people who are poor and don't have food. So she goes into the fields to be a gleaner. This is the life that she has chosen because she chose to serve God no matter what. I wonder how many people would serve God if there were no promises. If the only promise was you get delivered from your sin, you're no longer going to hell and you're going to heaven, and that's it. I wonder how many people would actually serve God if that's all there was to it. Thank God there's not. Thank God that there's so many exceedingly great and precious promises. Thank God that he wants to bless our life. But I wonder how many of us would serve God if we knew that serving God was going to mean we'd have to be a gleaner for the rest of our life. And by the way, we should be gleaners, right? We should always be gleaning from the godly principles of the word of God. But how many of us would do that? She did that. And watch what happens because she goes all in. Then she left, and she went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who is of the family of Elimelech. And she happened, the original language says, she chanced upon her chance. In other words, she stumbled into something that she wasn't expecting. Here's what happens when you go all in for God. The reward of providence is that God will walk you into blessings that you don't even expect in your life. You will find yourself in the right place at the right time. You will find yourself getting chosen. You will find yourself getting picked. You will find yourself in an opportunity that you never thought was possible because this is 
is one of the rewards of providence. He will walk you into places that you never thought you would ever experience in your life. But you got to go all in. And so she finds herself in the field of a man by the name of Boaz, who happens to be a relative. And watch what Ruth chapter 2 verse 4 says. Now behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, the Lord be with you. And they answered, the Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his servant who was in charge of the reapers, whose young woman is this? Notice how the verse starts. Behold. What does that mean? Well, that's just King James, Pastor. No, it literally means, check this out. You're not going to believe it. it. It would be like us saying, you'll never believe what happened next. In other words, when, when, the, when the hand of God is writing this verse, he's trying to let us know this is not a coincidence. This is God in his providence setting her up for the biggest blessing that she, she was to receive to date in her life. Behold, she went to the field of Boaz. Who was Boaz? Boaz? Boaz was tall, dark, and handsome. Boaz wasn't cheap as. He wasn't broke as. He wasn't lying as. He wasn't good for nothing as he was Boaz. She, he was getting set up by God. Why? Because she was all in. See, when you are all in for God, you'll have providential just so happen moments. But then number two, you'll encounter divine edits. Boaz has a conversation with Ruth. Says, don't go to any other field. Reap here in this field alone. I've told my servants not to lay a hand on you because when you were a gleaner and a woman in the Bible and you went into the field, the harvesters would rape you. And so she's going at the risk of her own life. Think of what this woman has given up for her mother-in-law. She's going at the risk of her own life to get some food so she could feed her stomach and go back and bring it to her, her mother-in-law. And because she was all in, no matter what the personal cost, she happens to come to a field where not only is the person a relative, but the person happens to, uh, she happens to catch the person's eye. Boaz was there at the precise moment that Ruth showed up. That wasn't common in Bible times. The owner of the field wasn't always at the field. The reapers were. But God set it up so that when she was there, Boaz was there. And of all the women that were gleaning in the field, she caught Boaz's eye. Why? Because God was setting her up for a different kind of story. The plan of the enemy or the plot of the enemy was that she would be raped. But God said, you know what? Edit that. It's time for her to meet her husband who is going to change her entire life. Divine edits. Show up in your life when you are all in. God takes what the enemy meant for evil and he turns it around for good. But then the, the third reward of, of providence that you get when you're all in is God will sit you at tables you don't belong at. Notice what the next portion of the story says. Ruth says, thank you. He says, my joy. Then he says this, come here and eat of the bread and dip your piece of bread in vinegar. I bet it was balsamic vinegar because any time of vinegar, vinegar is nasty, right? <laughs> Come here and eat of the bread and dip your piece of bread in the vinegar. So she sat beside the reapers and he passed parched grain to her and she ate and was satisfied and kept some back. Here she was gleaning, but she went from gleaning to sitting at the table. Here's what happens when you are all in. God will move you in places and put you in seats you have no business being in. God will put you before people. The Bible says your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. When you are all in, God knows he can trust you with his heart. And so what God will do is he will put you in places where you can influence people that you have no business coming into contact with. Why? Because you're all in. And God knows that when you're all in, you won't make a mockery of his name, but rather you'll make his name famous. Rather you'll draw people to Jesus because you're all in. And so he trusts her and he pulls her to the table. And notice when she gets to the table, and she's sitting in places that she never should have been in and she's eating until she's full. She didn't eat all the bread for herself. The Bible says she kept some back. You know why? Because she knew she had a mother-in-law. Can I tell you when God has put you at places that you don't belong at, don't use it all on you. Keep some back and let God bless other people through you. 
Life has a way of producing giant obstacles. These barriers tend to block growth and abundance from your family, your finances, your success, and even your destiny. And if these obstacles continue to grow, they will cause other issues, compromising your financial stability, your relationships, and even your health. It's time for you to defeat your giants and turn them into opportunities. Pastor Frank Santora wants to help you conquer your battles so you can see the true meaning and blessing behind them. In his brand new ebook, Your Giant is Going Down, you'll gain the knowledge and insight you need to defeat the unwanted stress, fear, and doubt in your life that is blocking your blessings. God will deliver you from every battle that you face. The key to claiming victory over these obstacles is having a strong connection with God and yourself. It's your time to eliminate these giants and have peace and happiness. Request your free copy of the Your Giant is Going Down ebook and receive a downloadable PDF to your email. The second reward when you're all in that you'll receive is the rewards of redemption. Naomi makes Ruth aware of a Jewish law, and it was called the Law of the Kinsman Redeemer. Ruth had no idea about this, and that's why we need people who are more mature in Christ in our lives. Because sometimes we miss out on the things of God just because we don't know. The Bible says this, that, um, that lack of knowledge will kill you. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And there are so many people who don't know how to receive. And the reason why they don't know how to receive is because they don't know how to sit under somebody who is more mature than them so they can learn the principles of the word of God and practice the principles of the word of God so that they can receive everything God has for them. And Naomi, who was seasoned in the faith, came to Ruth and she, she said this, listen, I want to tell you about something that is practiced as we serve God Jehovah. It's called the law of the kinsman redeemer. And the kinsman redeemer was the next of kin. Somebody who was closest to the family could actually come into their lives and buy back the land that they had owned at one time if they had to sell it during a financially difficult time. And Elimelech and Naomi had to sell their land because of the famine. And so now Boaz comes into their life. He's the next of kin. And so what she says is, listen, this is how we're going to get our land back. And here is the first reward of redemption that you receive when you're all in. It's the reward of getting back anything that the enemy has stolen in your life. When you're all in, when God catches the enemy, he's got to restore to you everything that he's taken from you and put some interest on that. And so he leads her to Boaz, kinsman redeemer, next of kin. Second part of the kinsman redeemer was that he could marry the widow and give her children so that the family name is carried on. But he's got to be asked, he's got to be willing, and he's got to be able to do it all. He's got to be asked, he's got to be willing, and he's got to be able. How many of you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, I'll do it. Why? Because he's willing. You know why he's willing? Because he went to the cross. You know why he's able? Because he defeated death, hell, and the grave through his resurrection. He's got to be asked. He's got to be willing. And he's got to be able. We have a kinsman redeemer. His name is Jesus. And so she goes and they ask him and she tells, Naomi tells Ruth, this is how you ask. And they go to Boaz and they ask him, and Boaz has to give him some bad news. He says, well, I'd do it. He said, the only problem is I'm not the next of kin. He said, there's, a, there's another guy. He, he's got first dibs. And so Boaz says to, to Ruth, don't you worry about it. I'll go handle it. I'll go track the guy down. By the way, fellas, can I tell you something? Take some pressure off of your wife. If you care about her, don't always put her to have to handle business. You handle some things. You keep, you keep her protected from those things. Bo Boaz said, you know what? I'll go take care of this. I'll go handle this. And by the way, you might be looking at me. Maybe you don't have a husband. Jesus right now is your husband. Let him go before you. Let him handle some stuff for you. But any man that wants to put his wife in harm's way is not really a man. So he says, stay back here. Let me go handle this. And he goes and he finds the guy. And he says, uh, there's a piece of land. Uh, you want to buy it back for the family? He's like, all right, I'll do it. He said, well, hold on, hold on. You can't just buy the land. You got to take the widow as your wife, and you got to let the mother-in-law live with y'all. And he was like, "Land, I'm cool with. Wife, I'm cool with. Mother-in-law, eh. <laughs> just playing." 
He says, no, 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 I'm not down. And you know what happens? Boaz says, good, because now I'm the next of kin because you refused. And so Boaz steps in. Second reward of redemption is the reward of upgrades. See, some people get upset when there's a no in, in your life. I never get upset when there's a no. I never get upset when there's a door that closes. You know why? Because that means God's got something better for me. See, she thought this was her kinsman redeemer. God said, no, I got to upgrade. I got a Boaz in, for you in your life. When every door shuts in your life, don't get upset. Look at it and say upgrade. When a person leaves your life, look at it and say upgrade. When you don't get the job opportunity, look at it and say upgrade. The reward of redemption is that God will upgrade everything in your life if you will be all in for the cause of Christ third thing we see is the reward of rising again. Here she is. Boaz marries her, and she goes from barely having enough to now she's got more than enough. From gleaning in the field to owning the field, from broke to blessed, from widowed to married, from destitute to delivered, from doomed to destined to win, from death to life. The reward of rising again. Some of you have been down so long you don't know that you got rise again in your DNA. You don't know that it is a promise of the Bible. The Bible says this, that a righteous falls seven times and rises again. And the Bible also tells us that the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, right? Palm tree in the storm goes like this. Storm is over. What does the palm tree do? <laughs> Comes right back again. And why shouldn't you have rise up in your DNA? After all, your Lord and your Savior is the king of the rise up. You know, they put him in a tomb. They buried him. They put soldiers in front of him. They beat him so bad it never looked like he'd ever come back again. They were so scared he would rise again. They put a stone in front of the grave. They put guards out in front. It didn't look like he was going to come back. But about three days later, in the middle of the night, before the sun came up, don't you ever worry if you can't see God because God does his best work in the dark. While the sun didn't even come up, there was a rumble that shook all of hell, and it made it way up to the Judean hell, hills of a borrowed tomb of Joseph of Arimathea and the angel of God with one little tiny finger flicked back that stone like it was a paperweight and up came Jesus with the keys of death, hell and the grave. You've got rise up in your DNA. The reward of redemption is rise up. But you've got to be all in. There are so many things we sacrifice because we are not all in. The last reward is the reward of being part of his tree. The reward of being part of his story. Not the reward of being part of history. There's a lot of people that want to be famous in the world's eyes. That don't matter. That's all going to disappear. You know, we should desire as Christians to be part of his story. Not worldly history, but his story. And this is what happened to Ruth. Notice what the scripture says. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. And he went into her, and the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. Then the woman said to Naomi, blessed be the Lord, for he has not left you this day without a close relative, a kinsman redeemer. And may his name be famous in Israel may be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons, has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her bosom, and he be she became a nurse to him. And the neighbor women gave him the name, saying, This is the son born to Naomi, and they called him Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. By the way, I did a little study. Do you know who most scholars believe, was a descendant of Orpah? Goliath. You know who we know was a descendant of Ruth? David. What happens when an all-inner meets an all-outer? That giant has got to go down in your life. She becomes part of the lineage 
of Jesus Christ. This is the greatest reward that you and I can ever receive in life is that we become part of his story, that God uses our life not for our glory but for his glory where we see people who are far from God come to Christ because they see the life and the light of Christ emanating from us. Everything in scripture points us to Jesus. Every story is a story about Jesus. Last week, we looked at the story of Samson, and it ends like this, and in his death, he killed more Philistines than in his life. Do you know what that's talking about? Jesus, because on the cross, do you know what he did? He destroyed every sin that is held against your soul and my soul so that you and I can have life. It was the greatest conquest of all by somebody who laid down his life. Every story is a story about Jesus. Naomi is destitute. She needs a redeemer. But in order to get to Boaz, she's got to go to th through somebody else. Who's that? Ruth. Naomi is us. Ruth is Jesus. Boaz is the father. In order to get to the father, what do you and I need to do? We need to go through Jesus because he said no man comes to the father but through me. Every story in the Bible is pointing us to Jesus. Everything is written there so that you and I would know that we need a redeemer because without Jesus, we're destitute. Without Jesus, we are spiritually bankrupt. Without Jesus, we are to live a life at the mercy of sin, ruling and reigning over us. But Jesus came so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. Hopefully you still don't see going all in as a scary proposition. All in is simply a trust issue. Going all in is really just a decision to start trusting in the power and the love of God. Trusting that God loves you so much that he gave his only son to die in your place. Trusting that God loves you so much that he won't ask you to do something that isn't for your benefit. Trusting that he is a good father and that he has good things in store for you. You need to embrace that truth. And so I've put together some resources to encourage you to take the next step and be all in for God. What does it take to be used by God in big ways? While salvation is freely available to everyone and doesn't cost us anything, the hard truth is that it demands everything. Are you up to this challenge? It's not as scary or difficult as it sounds. In his eight message all in series, Pastor Frank breaks down the cost and amazing benefits of going all in for Christ. He included practical steps to cultivate a heart for God and allowing yourself to be used by Him in great ways. This set is available alone for $48. But because the quality of our relationships impacts our lives for better or worse, Pastor Frank and his wife Lisa share from their 30-plus year marriage and the Word of God in a powerful two-part all-in relationship Q&A. This set includes both audio and video files on a USB drive for $20, or you can bundle them all together for only $60. Visit frankcentora.cc to get these and other resources today. Jesus himself said that anyone who desires to follow him must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow him. He says it plain as day, no false advertising, no clickbait, just simply that what you are signing up for is nothing short of all in. I hope you take that next step today and commit to being sold out for Christ. Thank you for watching and I pray that you have been equipped to discover and fulfill the destiny that God has just for you. In today's crazy world where right is wrong and wrong is right, it's becoming more and more necessary for people to hear the uncompromising truth of the gospel and the principles of the Word of God even when they aren't popular or are countercultural. There is a fire burning in me to preach the truth now more than ever to see people set free, discipled, and come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. But we can't do it alone, so we're asking you to partner with us financially on a monthly basis. No matter what you feel led of the Lord to do, whether it's large or small, together we can help reach this generation with the truth of the gospel. To become a partner, you can do so by visiting our website at franksantora.cc and choosing partnership. Through the power of partnership, we can do so much more together for the Lord. Thank you so much for your generosity and God bless you. And as always, remember these words that with Jesus, you are destined to win.
If you're in the New York City or Connecticut area, we invite you to visit us at one of our locations. Or join us online every Sunday at faithchurch.cc live. On behalf of Pastor Frank and from all of us at Faith Church, God bless you, we love you, and we'll see you next week.